Hey everyone, welcome back. So this is going to be a quick video. As most of you already know, if you're on the channel, the Quest 2 was released, which means new settings, new updates, all that kind of jazz. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you my UE4 setup, how I updated Android Works or Android Studio, whichever one it is now, to get it to run without errors. So let's jump on over to Unreal and we'll get started. So First thing I'm doing, I'm just using the default template. So if I go into project settings, you can see in target hardware, I'm just using mobile slash tablet and then scalable 3D or 2D. So same setup as the first videos I've done with the, the Quest 1. So before we actually jump into the project settings, I want to show you how we can update Android Works or Android Studio, whichever one the latest is now. So for me, I have it, Android Studio is installed in my C drive. So I'm going to open that up, bin, and then I actually had some issues before doing this. So I'm just going to go to Studio 64 and it won't, it won't ask me to do it now because I've already done it, but in the bottom, it asked me to update. So I did that and let it run through. And then the next step was to go to configure and then check for updates. And then this will just do a check. Everything's fine. I don't really need that. So we're all good. So we can close that. So just make Android, just make sure Android Studio is updated, otherwise it will cause its own errors when you build. So if we jump back into the project, so this is one I've just been playing around with this morning. So I got Bloom working, I got decals, and I got reflections as well. Glass is still, I need to work on glass a little bit more. But if we jump over to project settings, and we start at the top, we'll go through. So maps and modes, that's literally just set to my motion control map, same as normal. Then we've got packaging in here. If you've watched all my other videos or most of them, you'll know that I usually exclude editor content and I pick the files that I want to load up or the levels. So you can do that just here. So make sure it's got cook only maps, create compressed cooked packages, which will reduce deployment size. Let's make it faster to load, exclude editor content. Um, in support platforms, you need to make sure Android's enabled, otherwise it won't show up. And then if we go through it, uh, if we just go straight down to rendering. You're gonna need to you're gonna want to use mobile MSAA. If you set it to eight, it actually causes camera lag, or not camera lag, like tracking issues. So the hands stutter in place as they as they move, and it's pretty jarring and bad. So I recommend four times for that. Use legacy shading model is set to true. Allow to the LOD transitions. I haven't really had a chance to play around with these, but I've got a set of true and it works. And now if we scroll down, we're going to want to make sure forward shading is enabled because that's going to allow us to opt into certain features within the material editors, such as reflections, that kind of thing. If we keep going, in this instance, I've got bloom and ambient occlusion enabled. So when I build lighting, it builds ambient occlusion. And when I use a post process, it can allow me to use bloom, which gives a really nice effect. The next thing to do is make sure anti-aliasing method is set to MSAA. If not, it's just gonna look like crap. So we wanna make sure that's all nice and pretty. Take advantage of that extra CPU that we've got. So then, this is the fun part. In this project that I'm using, I'm actually using instant stereo is enabled and mobile HDR, which allows me to get the bloom effects and reflections and do a little bit more on the CPU than what we could do before. And it, it's working pretty well. If you do enable this and you get any errors, then just disable it and then just work without, it won't be too much of a difference, but you should be good to go. And now if we keep going down, we should find the Android tab. And what we wanna do in here is make sure that our minimum SDK version is set to 24 and our target SDK version is 28. I originally had these both at 25 and 25, but 24 and 28 works just as well, which is all good. I do have package game data inside .apk set to true as well, which is really good. And then if we scroll down, I think we've got everything else. Make sure enable full screen immersion on KitKat and above devices is set to true. I think this is by default, but it doesn't hurt to check. And then for the build settings. So I was trying to do this on stream the other day 
Uh, so if you want to see me on Twitch, then there'll be a link in the description. You'll be able to follow me along there. I do some uh, weekly live streams. So getting to build, we're going to do support arm 64. I was trying to do 86 and 64 earlier on, but this was causing some errors to occur due to hand tracking for some reason, but we weren't using it and it was still happening. So I just switched to arm 64 and then support Vulcan, set that to true. Everything's looking good. And you'll find it in package for Oculus mobile devices. If you're on an up-to-date version, it'll now say Oculus Quest 2. So just make sure you're on the right device. So for this version of Unreal I'm using, can't remember if I said already, it's due to 4.25.2 from the 4.25.3 from the Oculus Git repo, which I'll leave a link in the description. And then you need to make sure remove Oculus signature files from distribute APK is set to true. If you don't do this, it'll have difficulty loading the project, so should be all right. And then last of all, if we go to Oculus VR, going to enable auto enable splash screen. I think most of this is already enabled by default, but I set to enable specific color gamut and then color space to the quest. So we're just going to use the original one now. It's both, the, both are essentially the same. Um, in here, I've set my CPU level to four and my GPU level to four. I'd recommend not changing these, but I was playing around with this project earlier and just thought I'd put it up there to see how it works, like how well it handles it. And then FFR level. So this is forced foveate and rendering where you get the things around the eyes to just save on performance. I recommend just setting this to low. And then we've got FFR dynamic, chroma correction, Reset the HMD with controller, focus aware, or set to true. I haven't required the required system keyboard because I haven't put any inputs in there for that. But if you want, you can just enable that. And then last of all is late latching. Definitely put late latching on as it'll allow the headset to communicate with the controllers a little bit faster. So you'll get better, better reactions and update times. So I think that's pretty much it for this one. What I can do is if we jump over to SideQuest and we start streaming the headset, we can actually jump into the project and you can see that I've got Bloom, Reflections and Decals working. So hopefully, if I put my hand there, so hopefully this is a great start for some new content to come out and especially since we can start pushing this a little bit more. So if I try and move forward, You'll see the the reflections aren't amazing, but they do they do update and they do work, which is really quite cool for the new headset, especially going from the the Q1. So that's pretty much it for setting up the Quest 2 with Unreal. It's super simple. Just I'll link the other videos in the the description and put little tags on in the corner. They'll be in that one, I think. So just make sure to check those out first. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Or if you want a faster response from other people as well, we've got an awesome Discord community, which will have a link in the description, which you're more than welcome to come and join. Have a laugh over there and hang out and help each other out with it. And uh, it's just a pretty good place to hang out, to be fair. So in the next, I don't know, next few days, next next week or so, I'll be releasing some videos on the Quest 2 on how to set up like the decals and the bloom and just go over some stuff that we haven't really had the chance to do before. So I look forward to seeing you there and it's gonna be really cool. Until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.